Hello saviors, uh, it's been a while since I released a build guide for the Blossom Blader and a lot of people were asking can you update the build guide, can you make the changes to reflect the current meta and the current new patches. Well, it's here now and I'm going to discuss a bit about the changes that were made and some changes that were not made and some things that are still consistent for the Blossom Blader. Now before we begin, feel free to hit the subscribe button and like comment below if you have any questions that being said why don't we just get started and in this video i'm going to discuss some changes and some stable changes that tends to remain the way it is as my previous video so the skill sets themselves and skill rotation some slight differences based on some feedback and some updates from the players from the Tree of Savior Discord channel. Um, what remains true is the skill rotation. And that is, you always want to start with uh, Zornhau, followed by Zunkin, and Rydell. So this is the typical fashion. Um, they all connect. And for these skills, you really want to make sure that there's a connection ability for which one was it? Zerchow as well. Zerchow Connect allows you to sub Zornhau with Zerchow, uh, Zerchow with Zornhau. So in that case, you would go from Zerchow followed by Zunkin and then Rydell. So that still remains true. Um, other changes, most likely equipment in terms of the channeling, channeling set from Dahlia's Blessing. This actually works really well with your pouncing skill and cyclone, and it benefits greatly because two things, well, three, rather three things, actually occurs here. The channeling skill effect increases by 100% per part. So with four parts, your damage is actually increased by 400%, and the damage received while channeling is decreased by 5% per part. In other words, you have decreased damage taken by 20% when channeling. All right. Um, cooldown is also decreased by 5% per part, 20% total. So, right now, um, channeling uh, for pouncing, it's set to 24 seconds. So if I were to take these off, it would be 30 seconds. Cyclone is 25 seconds. Putting them on will give me uh, 21 seconds. So, typically, my skill rotation involves uh, starting off with Control Blade followed by Zerchow on Spam and then a con uh, Blossom Slash. And Blossom Slash allows you to teleport and this is a Vivora weapon as well. Uh, so the Vivora weapon is a fluorescent weapon. It consecutively damages up to four enemies around the player when using Blossom Slash. So my skill rotation again is Control Blade followed by a Zerchow Spam. If I have this on cooldown, I'll use a Blossom Slash followed by pouncing and when pounce, pouncing is done channeling I'll switch on over to the cyclone build uh, skill and around challenge mode 6 and 7 you really want to stun your enemies and I'll start off with war cry uh, increases the damage dealt to them uh, it, by proportion so if the more enemies the more damage you can do and there is cleave cleave releases a strong attack on the enemies by spinning your body if the attack is accurate, in other words, if it lands, it's a, your critical rate and damage dealt to stunned enemies increases. So if you're dealing with stunned enemies, your damage is definitely increased. So try to have um, Sism as well. The Sism will stun the enemy and then start up with Warcry and your damage will definitely increase. Now, buffs themselves. These are my following buffs. I use these of Valor. And these are Valor, increases the damage you dealt, but you also receive more damage, which is why often Blossom players tend to be a bit squishy. Um, other skills, in, other buffs include Gung Ho and Bear. So Gung Ho increases your physical damage through the power of determination, and Bear reduces damage taken. Okay, and the other buffs that I like to use is the Pain Barrier and Liberate. So most of these really didn't change from my previous video. So I, I would have all these buffs and I would uh, use Liberate and Pain Barrier on cooldown at all times. 
Same thing with Startup. Startup, what it does is increases your reduces damage received by 50%. So you really want to have this to go alongside with Deeds of Valor because Deeds of Valor will increase your damage taken by 19% and this will reduce it. So it kind of counteracts that, all right? With Startup, you increase your critical damage temporarily, but you really want to make sure you charge it fully because if you don't charge it fully, you get stunned with a 30% HP decrease. By charging that fully, and then move on to flowering. If there's enemies around, I use flowering. And what it does is it inflicts a debuff and it stacks up with each attack landed, all right? And for every, every uh, debuff stacks, you increase your damage by 2%. Once I have that casted, I like to use Frenzy. And what Frenzy does, it gives you a stack. For every stack, you increase your attack speed and the damage per stack. So I'll have this on with the Blossom debuff and it just keeps getting stronger and stronger for every attack. If I'm trying to escape a certain situation or if I'm doing Teharsha, I like to use Flash. Flash is a great maneuverability ability. It's it's more like a teleport because it lets you get into areas that normally um, you can't get into. Uh, I like to use Thrust as well now. That's a bit, bit of a change from my previous build. Thrust definitely helps with maneuverability. And let's see what else am I missing here. Oh, I like to point out that I'm actually using a Dorandal with the bear skill. So the Dorandal is a separate weapon swapping skill, uh, sword, which allows me to have three additional levels to bear. So let's put that on. And the bear skill, put it right here, is level eight damage taken reduced by 25.6 percent so what i would do is i'll have the Dorando on and then i'll cast gung-ho and bear and then i'll swap back to my main weapons and i'll work on my usual buffs and my usual rotations flowering frenzy these are valor pounce you could also debuff with war cry cleave Blade, Blade, Spencer Child, Blossom Slash, everything on cooldown at that point. Now, to get into what my skills are, uh, keep in mind that if you go from level 440 to 450, you get additional skill points. I believe that's three. And with those three skill points, what I've done is I use two in the Swordsman tree, and then I use one last one in the Barbarian tree to have level 1 Sism. For me, I initially had this ma at max in my previous build and I decided it wasn't really necessary. Uh, I just needed this to stun the enemy so I kept it at 1. So the Swordsman build, you want to have Thrust at level 1. Definitely enhance this all the way with attributes. Get the Arts Charge and what it does, it allows you to have t an overheat of 2. In other words, you can use it twice. Followed by getting Gung Ho to 5 with the attribute max bear to five with enhanced attribute max pain barrier max out to five liberate at one because that is only you only have one um, but depending on your situation if you're dpsing definitely you want to have awaken on if you're tanking you want to have fortitude on in terms of attributes like i said you want to get the arts for thrust charge Max out enhance if you have the attribute points readily available. Um, liberate, fortitude, provoke. Definitely, if you're if you're tanking, have provoke as well. And that's it for swordsman. Moving over to blossom blader, what I have is flowering at five with swift. Um, I think this was a poor investment because this only works if you're using a one-handed sword when attacking enemy. Um, I just happen to have extra attribute points but you really don't need this if you're not using a one-handed sword uh, startup definitely have startup uh, you want to have all these attributes uh, startup flash startup blossom slash on blossom what it does is it al allows you to apply the flowering debuff okay um, control blade control blade I have it set to attribute 100 uh, you want to get hidden blade art and this allows you to slash uh, multiple enemies within a certain range um, without this your 
attacking what's in front of you, but allowing this lets you to cast the skill at a range. Flash allows you to dash across. Um, I have Flash Rush, which decreases the cooldown by 5 seconds, but it increases SP consumption. Um, when in endgame, you really don't really care about SP. You're either using monopods anyway, or you have a healer providing SP. Moving over, we have the Blossom Slash skill. Definitely have it to enhance attribute. And if you can, if you have the availability of the Mystic Tomes, get the arts for it as well. Now, in terms of attribute investments, this is what it looks like. I have pretty much everything necessary as described earlier. Uh, I don't have this one because I don't have the skill. I'm not using Fallen Blossom. So, Doppel Sonic. What I have here is a max out Deeds of Valor, max out Zorn Howl, get the Rush Attack, because this allows you to have two overheats, in other words, you can use it twice, followed by Zunkin, and Ride Out. Zerchow, again, 100 attribute investment with Connect, and followed by Cyclone. Now, Cyclone is a, it's a finicky one, because there's two, two roles you can do with Cyclone, and one is definitely need movement, because this allows you to move around. if you're doing CM. Um, this one also increases the, the range of the Cyclone uh, at, a co at a cost of increased cooldown. Now, if you're doing a channeling build, you definitely want to get this up. Um, this is where most of your damage will be coming from. However, if you're doing Glacia or you're doing the boss in World Bo Weekly Boss Raid, you want to have uh, this art on. And what this does is it keeps you stationary, but it procs everything as fast as possible. And this is particularly good if you're trying to uh, dodge around, get around certain situations, especially in weekly boss raid. So in terms of uh, attribute investments, it's pretty simple. As described, uh, you want to get the art for Cyclone Enhance Upgrade, and this is done through Mystic Tomes. Get this maxed out. I believe the max is, yep, max is 30. Max out everything to 100 as described here. Have to connect, have to rush attack. Um, let me turn this back on because I'm going to see him later, so I'll have these back on. Um, get the arts for tornado. Get the Dalpasana. It's tough. Reduces your stamina by 5, but increases your critical damage per level. Get Zernhow to 100. Cyclone movement, Cyclone enhance. And then we'll move over to the Barbarian. Barbarian is pretty simple as well. Uh, the most notable skill in this is the pouncing skill and, uh, and this is especially if you're doing a channeling build because pouncing is where most of your damage will come from. Um, pounce, you definitely want trance and what trance is going to do is you can't move but this allows your pouncing skill attack range to double. Get all of this maxed out. I, this is the first thing I maxed out using Mystic Tomes. So going back to initial portion, uh, get cleave. Cleave set to 100, get the remove knockdown. Warcry gets to 100. Sism, I kept that at 1, but I have, again, I have an extra attribute point, so I maxed it out. Uh, Frenzy gets to 100, and this is what it looks like in terms of investments. Now, Barbarian has a special hidden, I don't know how to say, because I didn't find out until I learned about it through the Discord channel, that is the Leather Mastery Animal Instinct. Now previously, before a certain time period, this was set to increase more damage, but now it scales off the transcendence of your main weapon. Uh, if you're wondering what transcendence is and what enhancements are, I have a video that I will link in the description below on how to craft in-game gear. But typically, transcendence is the number that you see here, 10. 16 is the enhancement. All right, so keep that in mind. So 10 with the Leather Mastery, you can do the calculation yourself. Uh, 10 times the art level, 25, whatever. And then increase 2,500. Followed by, okay, you want to get the Warcry Enhanced Attributes. Uh, cleave Attributes, Cleave, Knockdown. Um, use two-handed swords as well, okay? Now, uh, let's move on to skill point, stat point investment. Initially, if you're definitely starting your new to the game, you want to put everything into con. And why do I say con? Because if you're new to the game, you have no gear, no endgame gear, the most important thing is 
sustainability, and survivability. Khan will increase your HP dramatically. And that will help with the survival and in-game content, especially if you're flagging, if you're a hunter, falconer, or if you're just a cleric. But regardless, whatever your role is, if you don't have the in-game crafted Icker, then having everything in Khan is a necessity. At which case, if you do have everything that you do need, in other words, you got all the endgame crafted gear, you have all the ickers that you need, um, you know, you have the offsets, you have the con that provides from the icker, then go ahead, redistribute all your stat points into strength. And that's exactly what I did here. I have everything to strength. Uh, let's see. Assisters. Assisters are pretty simple. Um, what I'm using on the primary slot, and a, a uh, subscriber pointed this out that whatever is on your primary slot is what will take precedence. Uh, if I, I had this initially down here and it didn't do anything, what it did was it gave me increased pistol damage, which was a silly mistake. Uh, and I also had increased add damage, as, which really didn't benefit me as much as having slash damage in the initial slot. So what I have here is my typical build for either challenge mode or Glacia. And I have increased slash damage, accuracy, strength, dex, and damage in raid zone. This is what I would have against Glacia. Now, if I were to run CM, I'd like to actually run. What was I running before here? I think I had Rafine, yeah. But if you remember, if you have two beasts, it increases your damage. So let's put another beast card in. Let's put Misru's. So notice that beast combination passive strength is increased by 49. So that's another benefit. Um, normal gray compositions, the Noctis and Rafine, the damage received from the field zone is decreased by 47%. So that's another benefit as well if you're out there in the field. Out now, this does not apply to challenge mode, okay? Moving forward, we'll look at cards. And what do I use for cards? Remember, red cards is dependent on the type of enemy you're fighting. Right now, uh, Path of Decision is mainly beast cards, so I am using beast cards, especially on my legendary slot. Stonewell reduces damage received is another good good card to have. Zara and Nuelli cards are dependent upon the type of monster you're fighting. If I'm doing Glacia, I'll have more Nuelli cards would provide magical defense. Um, also a Nuelli legend card. Now, if I was to do Glacia, no, rather if I were to do challenge mode or anything outside of that, I would just use Zaura cards. Rashua card is also very good. That's considered endgame as a master card. I am still missing one. But prior to that, I was using Nether Bellvine, which provided only 10 strength. Notice that each of these get 40, so I am actually missing a another 40 here despite cards let's go over equipment um, most of these are near endgame um, without going into too much detail about endgame gear because I know there's a huge power creep and gap uh, you want to get Draconis Pitgis uh, you want to get channeling set your Ickers should reflect the type of uh, weekly boss rate you're fighting, the type of monster. Definitely get Strength, Con, Crit as your base Icker, followed by an offset that allows you to do more damage against people hitting leather target. Alright. Your seal, try to get it to 3. This will benefit you greatly, especially with the Dragon Strength. Um, for the Cosmetic items, the hair accessories, try to get physical critical attack as well. When the time comes, try to get a Vivora fluorescent and a Vivora trinket. I don't have that at the moment, so I'm using the Glacier trinket. Legend set enhancements is what you go to from the Alchemist Master. Let's, let's go over to the Alchemist Master. I think his name is Abdu. And what you really want to get here is you actually have two options here. You can either go Sulk, which allows you to have increased burst damage. 
And initially I had Sulk at first and I decided it wasn't really something I wanted. So here, uh, blue, you want to do apply set stats and by applying a set stat, you can go from Sulk and Sulk what it does is damages the enemy around you and knocks the enemy out for a second, which increases your damage by 150% for seven seconds. This is really good in certain situations. I think it still works really well with this build, but I opted this out. I moved on over to the Balenta setup and I'll tell you why. So with Balenta, there's a huge benefit. Notice the six set effect applied all at, at all times. In other words, you're no longer uh, buffing. This is very similar to the previous set item. I forgot what it was, it's been a while. But it, it applies at all times, it increases damage by 50% and it recovers your HP by 20% of the HP recovery rate when using a slash type, strike type, pierce type scale, 10% of the HP recovery rate when attacking with other property skills and basic attack. The effect occurs every two seconds. So why do we need this? So we need this actually for sustainability and survivability because when you're doing weekly boss raids, you need to survive the full onslaught of 10 minutes. And you can have great burst damage, but if you can't survive it, what's the point of having all that burst damage, right? So that's the one thing that I've noticed is I had great burst damage, but I wasn't really surviving things. And again, Blossom Blader can be squishy unless you do it right. Gem skills. What I have here is Frenzy, Pouncing, Cyclone, and that's pretty much it and from the Dorando Bear skill as well. I don't think there's anything else to cover for the Blossom Blader at this point as an updated video to the previous video. But if I am missing something, feel free to comment below and let me know and I'll do my best to get back to you. I also will provide an updated skill build in the description below. So again, thank you all and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.
Thank you. 